Hello, today we're going to talk about draggable elements in your Canvas apps. Um, so I'll demonstrate what I mean. I've uploaded a, a picture here, a PNG, continue. Uh, that's my picture that I can resize. And this over here is a draggable element. I can move this around my canvas. I can drop it wherever. I can resize that a bit. I can move it into place. How cool is that? Pretty handy, right? Well, it's not too difficult to do, um, and it's although it's not something that's available in out of the box Power Apps. So we need to do a few tricks to get there. So let me show you how that's done. The secret to it is in a you may have guessed a slider, and we need uh, we're going to need a timer as well. This timer is going to run on a loop, and every time the loop finishes it's going to change our slider. So just to explain a bit of background about this, the if we're tracking X coordinates, we're tracking how far across the screen the user is clicking, a horizontal slider could do that for us, right? That could do the job. Similarly, if the slider was set to layout a vertical, we could track the Y coordinates. Uh, obviously, we need to invert that because the slider goes low to high, whereas Y coordinates start at zero and go to the max. So we need to kind of invert that value. But the principle is the same. We can find X and Y values. The problem comes when, uh, obviously, Power Apps is kind of a layered structure. So you, you can't have two controls being selected at the same time, right? One on top of the other, one behind the other. Uh, it's not going to work. The user can only select one at a time. But we can create this kind of, uh, I guess, sort of quantum situation where one slider has two different properties because it's toggling very, very quickly. So to do that, let me chuck in a couple more controls. We're going to need, uh, let's just put in a button and let's put in something that we're going to move around. So we just put an icon in here. So Let's set up some variables. We're going to set, first thing we're going to need is an X position. I'll just set that to something for now and then set a, a Y position. And we're also going to set a, a var layout. This is going to be our um, the layout of our slider, whether it's horizontal or vertical. I'm just going to use letters to denote that. So I'll set it to vertical in the first instance. Let's set those variables up and put this where it needs to be. So the X of this is going to be X pos and the Y is going to be Y pos. Oops. Y pos. And in fact, if we want those coordinates to be precise, we should probably go X pos minus self dot width divided by two and then Y pos minus self dot height divided by two just to get that exact central position. So that's enough about our item that we're moving around. We don't need to do anything else to that. Everything else happens with the slider. So we're going to customize this beyond all recognition. The first thing we're going to do is set the default of our slider. So the default is going to, everything's going to toggle between two values. Okay. And it all depends on var layout. So if var layout is H, in other words, if we've got a horizontal slider, we want our default value to actually be x pos. We want it. We want it to be x position, right? However, if it's vertical, we want it to be uh, app height minus y pos because it's, remember we need to invert those values. Um, the next thing we need to customize is, of course, the layout itself. So this is going to be on a on a kind of a switch. Um, a switch thing. Well, we can do a switch or we can do an if statement. It doesn't, doesn't really matter. So we do if var layout equals at v layout vertical layout horizontal. Okay, so depending on that variable, it's going to determine the layout of this. The next thing we need to set is the max because bearing in mind that we're not dealing with a, a square here, we're dealing with a uh, a screen which is wider than it is tall. So the max value, I want it to be number of pixels across 
or I want it to be number of pixels tall. So again, we'd say if var layout equals h, then we want it to set to app width. Otherwise, app height. The minimum we can set, we can leave to zero. Show value we, we want to be off. The handle size I'll leave as is for now. We'll talk about that in a bit. Um, the rail size I set to be big, like really big, um, because you want it to sort of take up the whole screen. That gives the user the ability to click wherever they like. Um, they don't just have to be specific on the on the image itself. And everything else I'm going to leave as is. But the last thing we'll do is make that slider invisible. So let me show you what's going on so far. Oh, we haven't done our timer yet. So our timer is going to control the toggling, the flapping backwards and forwards of this of this slider. So we're going to set the timer to duration of zero. So run as fast as you can. Repeat on. It's going to repeat. And it's going to auto start. Uh, I'll leave it visible for now. And on the timer end, on timer end, we want to do two things. So we want to say if var layout equals h, set var layout to be v. Otherwise, set var layout back to be h again. So let's just go toggle between those those two values. Okay. The other thing we want to do. Uh, let's just. I think it's going to do before that actually is we're going to use a switch here. Far layout. If it's H, we're going to. So if if our if our slider is horizontal, we we're not interested in capturing the Y coordinates at that point. We don't care about it. We only care about the X position. So we're going to set our X position to be the current slider dot value. Bear in mind, this is happening really fast, okay? So this is happening several times a second. It's saying, is the current layout horizontal? If so, okay, I'm going to set this value to be, I'm going to set this variable to be this value. Okay, can't pick it up. Come on, Power Apps. Wake up. Value. All right, if it's vertical, we're going to, that's when we're interested in our Y position. And we'll set that to be the app dot app dot height minus the slider dot value. Remember, we need to invert that. God, I can't type this morning. Slider one dot value. All right, close that off. So this, and I think I've done everything I need to do. Yeah, so that's creating our dual slider scenario. It's one slider. But you'll see if I select it and move around, it's following me. It's 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 capturing two coordinates because things are happening fast. Um, it kind of looks a bit confusing right now. But if we tidy things up by making so we could, we can't make this invisible because the user won't be able to select it. So it needs to be a. It needs to be right at the front of the screen. And also, it needs to be transparent. Every, all our colors just set to transparent here. I probably don't need to set all of these, but I'm just doing it anyway. Rail hover, transparent. Um, fine. Yep, so. Okay. Um, the final thing, the rail. Set that. And there we go. Set these two to be invisible. And hopefully we can now pick up our cross and drag it anywhere on the screen. Obviously there's lots going on that we can't see right now. Lots of kind of crazy flickering going on behind the behind the background, but from a user's perspective they just got to pick something up and move it around the screen. That's it. I hope you have a play with it. Um, be interested to see what people develop using this and uh, take it further. So good luck. Cheers.